Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this is my video about my theories on why Terminator Dark Fate failed at the box office. All the other videos are saying bombed, but I don't want the word bomb in my video title, uh, so I'm saying failed. Um, uh, I actually like uh, I like mixing it up on the main channel, doing uh, talking about TV and movies. It brings in a new crowd, you know. Maybe someone who didn't hasn't read comics in a few years would really like Jawbreaker's God King. Link in the description. It's basically Expendables meets the Avengers. Uh, awesome uh, art. Uh, so go check it out. So anyway, um, uh, the box office is pretty much in, or at least has been accurately extrapolated you might say how can you tell the weekend box office on sunday morning or even saturday evening well they've had enough uh other movies over the last few decades that you can extrapolate that pretty even just from like uh friday night you can extrapolate the weekend pretty well so what it's looking like is is a straight up uh bomb <laughs> failure uh it's uh doing uh a little worse than terminator genesis from four years ago but then you know with inflation you know it's it's like a couple million uh short so it's it's embarrassing um especially since it seemed to have everything going for it or did it um one of the uh you know uh, main things you see is a lot of people blaming this on the woke advertising the SJW ness of the movie, but I gotta say, besides you know the ever-present you know need to replace all straight white male heroes with something that isn't straight white and male, uh, it, it was just basically it's just two hours of basically info dumps and really tepid uh, action scenes with mediocre CGI. Like it's it's not that SJW, uh, but that is one of the multiple aspects. Uh, for this failure. I've got to say, I think the largest failure for this is something that hasn't been talked about a lot. It's just a real simple thing of the budget. What makes something successful? S profit. And how do you make profit? Well, you spend a lot less than you make and then the rest uh, is uh, profit. Um, uh, they've done this with uh, the Rambo and the Rocky franchises when they you know they started kind of getting less and less successful they took a break of a decade or almost two and then they came back with some really lean low budget um, takes I just uh, looked up what the first Terminator budget was and um, it was something like 6.4 million I, I did a quick you know inflation calculator that comes out to be about 15 million dollars uh, in you know current year uh, so if it would have cost 15. Let's even double that and make it 30. Let's say you shoot it for 15 million and you give Arnold 15 million. This still would have been a, you know, solid success. Uh, you know, uh, the Terminator franchise is pretty simple. It's essentially Jaws. You know, it's uh, there is something that is more powerful than the things hunting it, and look how difficult it's going to be for this waitress and a skinny guy from the future or a. Uh, 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 what do you call um, P90X mom and a 12 year old or uh, I kind of brain dumped what was it it was like uh, Claire Danes and a, a different guy playing John Connor in the third one the, but but the the Terminator the, the second Arnold he was helping them right but then it was a more advanced uh, female Terminator and on and on and on like that so you know it's a, it's a kind of a creaky, very, very simple 35-year-old uh, franchise. And, you know, it's just, it's been done. you got to ask, like, how is this different? And it, and it really is. And as people said, this was literally just like a mix and match of scenes and plot lines and characters from the previous five movies. Um, I remember back in the day, there used to be really huge Terminator fans, and there really aren't that many. Even the people who are into it, it's like their eighth favorite franchise. Like I said, it's fairly simple, and most of the thing you like about it is the first two movies specifically. So we got an old and creaky franchise. Then the other thing, Yellow Flash brought up in a, a video yesterday, he goes, there are like two generations who 
we were either not alive or don't remember a good Terminator movie in the theaters. I would say, you know, the first two. The first uh, one came out in 1984. The second one, I think, came out in 1991. I mean, that's a while ago. This is like me in like as a school kid that long ago. Uh, and I'm a uh, uh, middle aged, so yeah, that's that's another factor. It's like why would why would you go to this? Um, the woke advertising, uh, specifically the um, I think I used it as the thumbnail for my last video about this movie, is uh, you know you had uh, what's her name Cameron from Halt and Catch Fire, right there in the middle, looking pretty androgynous and kind of just having like not like a cool. Ever watch all the old you know? cool action movies from the 80s and 90s, the hero would always have this face like, come on, we're going to have fun. <laughs> come, on, come on, it's going to be cool. Yeah, yeah, I got blood and my shirt's ripped up, but it's going to be cool. She looks miserable. She looks like someone who is actually experiencing living in this world of, you know, uh, vicious killer cyber, you know, uh, robot. She hates it. She looks miserable. And then you got a woman you kind of know who's almost recognizable. I think a lot of people, if they were not told that was Linda Hamilton, would not recognize her as Linda Hamilton. And then you got someone else and you're like, what is this? Who is the star? You know, you would think it would be Linda Hamilton, but then she's, you know, like 62. And so it's just confusing. There's the other one is that Tim Miller, I think at uh, Comic-Con, he did some, you know, virtue signaling. He's like, this is going to piss off the incels on the internet. Uh, that's kind of, I don't think that really cost them that much money. Um, I think the people who didn't go because of that were already gonna, not going to go because of some other question. So getting back to my thing about where this should have just been a, a real lean and mean, uh, either James Cameron or a protege of his doing this for like 15 to 30 million with Arnold. I mean, I'll just throw out a really simple plot. The resistance soldier that the T-800 was based on. They actually did like a joke uh, extra scene. I think it was after Terminator 3. He had like a Southern accent. It was like, ha, ha, ha. And then a different guy had the Arnie accent. Okay, so you just write that out. And it's the original resistance fighter. And he's coming to fight a, you know, they did a pretty good job doing a CGI young Arnold in both this one and I think Salvation. So you just do that, uh, real simple, you know. Um, and again, that CG, you know, it's expensive to do a CGI. Don't tell me Arnold's that expensive. He's performing in some really low budget, like straight to streaming movies these days. Uh, yeah, he could hold out, you know, for you know X amount of the profits, but then you know you make sure there's profits, and you just make it uh, sure it's a really good script. This one was like this weird kind of six screenwriters and they brought James Cameron in as a producer but it seemed like mostly what he did is just like give like ideas he didn't use before because quote they didn't have the technology but this movie was just like generic chase scenes like you could have done a drone crashing into some vehicles in 1991 it just would have been you know some models but that's a pretty easy you know gag to do in special effects so the whole, you know, uh, the James Cameron thumbs up when this thing was obviously like not really influenced by him. That was uh, that was pretty weak sauce. But I still think the uh, the largest thing was just uh, a creaky old franchise in a movie where you couldn't tell who was the lead in a just a so so trailer. And this thing was always just freaking DOA. The weird thing is this, you know, they say this is kind of a mix and match of the last five movies. But it's really kind of a mix and match just of the last one. Female lead, you know, not Arnold. Have him in there a little bit, but not enough to make audiences happy. Uh, the audience I was with, they ate up every single thing Arnold did. They absolutely loved it. And honestly, he was kind of one of the best things. I mean, he's got more charm than everyone else in that movie put together. And he still looks good. I think he actually looks better than... The last movie from five years ago, I think he was just getting over a surgery. So he's, you know, 72 or something like that. But he's real hale and hearty. It would have been cool to do like an Unforgiven, you know, this old resistance uh, soldier trying to track down a T-800 uh, with no help from anyone. Um, but yeah, that's that's my take. It's kind of a, it's kind of a mush. It doesn't have any satisfying, you know, it's the SJWs or it's uh, female leads or it's uh, that Cameron from Halt and Catch Fire. It's just a bunch, a bunch of things. I think this, this version was never going to be successful uh, unless you shot it for a ridiculous... Well, yeah, 
If, if it's not Arnold as the lead. Oh, the other one, and this one's kind of harsh, but uh, what's his name who played John Connor, you know? Yeah, he had the whole, you know, kid actor, bad start to life type of thing, but if his whole life hadn't been just like a bunch of rehab and I think he had a bunch of arrests and stuff like that, that guy was a real viable lead, like an in-shape, healthy, that guy, I'm forgetting his, uh, his real name, you know, in a 15, 20 million dollar, uh, geez, you know, him going up against uh, uh, just even a CGI Arnie with, you know, Arnie doing the voice of motion capture. That would have been a good, solid hit if you kept the uh, budget down. So again, what I'm saying is I think the main failure was realizing this was a creaky old franchise that's really hard to jumpstart in any way. I mean, to make it a giant, like hundreds of millions of dollars, you know, half a billion dollar hit, I don't know. I mean, you even look at stuff like Cowboys and Aliens. That had Harrison Ford and it had uh, Daniel Craig at like the height of his fame. And like, like there, there's some point where it's just like, okay, we, we've seen a bunch of things like this. I, I don't know what to do. Maybe get Tarantino, but you know, he's not going to make it for 15 million. So yeah, like I said, the best idea I could think of is come up with a really, really cheap. Oh, God, why am I ignoring Michael Bean? Who is at like every comic book convention in the world? Fit, he looks great. Jeez. Freaking, yeah, some kind of Michael Bean, you know, uh, even do a soft reboot. You do a freaking soft reboot where he got stuck in the time stream, he aged 30 years, and you cast, you know, another young woman as uh, Sarah Connor and you kind of you redo the movie real cheap. Um, God, that would have been freaking awesome. Uh, I love my own ideas. They're great. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of permutations you could do um, uh, with the original story, with the original. I mean, they do that with, it wasn't the Halloween. It was basically like, you know, let's do it nice, strip down, lean, concentrate on the basic conflict and go from there. So anyway, uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the GoFundMe and the Indiegogo. You're funding original content and an original lawsuit. Oh, that's going to be... <laughs> if, you, if you don't follow my channel and you just came in for the Terminator Dark Fate, you're really, really confused. Uh, so, yeah. So, a, an elder statesman in the uh, comic book industry who's written basically every character your mom has heard of uh, decided he really, really didn't want my comic book about a bunch of ex-mercenaries rescuing a giant ape to be in comic book stores. And now we're in a federal lawsuit <laughs> over his interference and uh, his defamation. So that link is also in the description. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe, make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the GoFundMe and the Indiegogo. You're funding original content and unoriginal lawsuit. <laughs> There's a lot of head scratching for the, the just the Terminator fans who just wandered into this video. And I will have, uh, uh, might have another video uh, today, might have it tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bye.